So, you know, one of the topics that's emerging in the uh, field right now is the idea of couples crossing the threshold of vulnerability again. You know, the addiction uh, treatment field and the, and the partner trauma field have made great strides. You know, we are keeping addicts sober in recovery. Uh, partners are finally feeling heard, validated, and they're making great strides in um, the core tasks that are required to get these couples back on some level playing field emotionally where the addict is now not keeping secrets and the partner's feelings um, uh, validated and, and there's amends made. And one, of the, one of the things that's emerging in the field though is the need for couples to uh, begin to heal together again. And so both couples and therapists seem to be struggling with how to do that because the issue of can I trust you again is right at the top of the, of the list of, of what comes up if they begin to make strides to reconnect. So uh, I've been talking lately about the concept of crossing the threshold of vulnerability again and there's really no easy way to do that. It's an act of courage for couples to uh, recommit, if you will, um, and one of the things that has to happen in that experience is that the couples need to make a decision about whether they're moving forward or not. Forward or not. So many of them are really stuck in a, in a phase of indecision. They decide not to leave each other, which is not the same decision as deciding to move forward in vulnerability again. And there's some great couples models out there that are helping these couples. The emotionally focused therapy is one of them where they take the couple into the deeper meaning of this conflict around betrayal. And so couples seem to be responding to things like that. Uh, I think as therapists, we need to start examining um, ways to support couples in doing that. So what happens when, when I think when therapists meet uh, their own concerns or their clients' concerns that, well, if I'm going to trust him again, I could get betrayed again, they resort back to what we call individual as client modalities. Let's rehearse the old narrative of the betrayal. Let's make sure you're staying in recovery, addict. Um, and there's not enough discussion about can the two of you make a new decision about moving forward. Some of the pieces we see that are critical in that is that the couples have to grieve together the loss of the first romance. That's, that's one of the big issues. Because the, the truth of the matter is, is once there's been betrayal, uh, the first romance is over. It isn't the same anymore. And I think that's a painful reality for both the addict and the partner to face. We've seen couples, uh, I designed a, um, a workshop at the Meadows Treatment uh, a Workshop Program where we took couples through that process and it was a very powerful process. They did an art therapy project where they said goodbye to their first marriage. Uh, they destroyed a symbol of their first marriage. They took the pieces and they reformed them in another art therapy project to represent moving forward. And that seems to be one of the big um, places that couples need assistance around, is, is saying goodbye to the first marriage and redeciding what going forward is gonna look like. And so what it looks like is when the couples feel helpless and frustrated and the therapists do, they move back into the individual client paradigm, which winds up rehearsing and reinvigorating the old very, very uh, successful strategies, you know, polygraphs and different things, but it doesn't assist them to move into vulnerability again. So uh, I think as a field, that's one of our next places that we really need a lot of assistance around. And we have a lot of good couples therapists who understand both sexual addiction and partner trauma and couples therapy, and you really need somebody who knows the whole thing. If the couples therapist is not trained in sexual addiction, they're gonna misunderstand um, what's needed you know, in that process of the early recovery stuff. If you have individual therapists trying to do couples therapy, they may understand partner trauma, they may understand sexual addiction treatment, but then they try to do couples therapy and they wind up being either overprotective of the addict or overprotective of the partner and really adding to the distress and the uh, decision not to separate or not to leave each other, which again is not really a decision to move forward. So I think as a field, we, we have lots of good people in the ITAP community who, can, who are doing this work. And so this, this workshop I did this week and this topic we're talking about right here, I think is piece of the next phase for us to move forward to.